Today I'm going to answer one question which has been popping up many times about sexuality. I mean, this is, it seems to be very crucial for many people to understand this aspect because through religions, through other spiritual schools or different spiritual schools, people receive different ideas about Spirit, sexuality, spirituality, their connection, is there any connection? Some people say indulging the sexuality, experiences, some people say abstaining. What is sexuality? And what is it to spirituality? We all evolved beings, no matter which country they were from, tradition. In other words, Siddha being. Siddha being means a being which has evolved beyond the mundane. The being that has perfected their understanding of self. Perfected means all the corruption has been dissolved and the essence is all that remained. So these sort of beings never said to abstain from sexuality or to indulge in sexuality. As we all have sense organs in the physical body, as we use our limbs, as we use our digestive organs, so we can use our sexual organs. So true, spirit, true sexuality is inseparable from true spirituality. Because it's like the, the house is not flying, floating in the air, but standing on a firm ground and has a firm foundation. So is the spirituality sprouts out on a firm foundation. And if we understand spirituality well, the actual spirituality, we will understand that whenever we have issues with ourselves or we have a corrupt notion of ourselves we in other words disrespect ourselves ashamed of ourselves we hold different emotions which veil our perception of self and drag us to all directions we have no understanding of spirituality, no understanding of sexuality, and no understanding of well-being. This well-being means our health and our monetary financial well-being. But it is not even about the money. It is about the way we experience life do we perceive abundance and self as a source of this abundance? But abundance means contentment because the less abundance doesn't mean that you have to have everything. Abundance means that you are not lacking anything. Abundance means you are absolutely content with what you've already got. So when one has that contentment within, one cannot lack anything, yet one does not indulge in anything. So spiritual, true spiritual understanding of sexuality, of money, is or comes from contentment. True knowledge comes from contentment. And so when one indulges into something, in something or one involves in something when one wants something what is the motive inside where does it come from it comes from imbalance there is no such desire that would come from contentment because contentment is free from desires if one involve or involves in into sexual activity through contentment, there is no entanglement. 
When one loves and pairs with the other through contentment, there's no drama. There's no discontent. There's no demand. There's no entitlement. There is no proof. Current beings are not able to understand that love is contentment. One can only love the other and dwell with the other in peace when one is content within oneself. Love is not emotion. True love is not emotion. Man-made love, yes, it's, it's a, it comes from inner incompleteness. Any kind of emotional love comes from inner incompleteness. And when that hole is there, one wants to fill it in. And so one creates ideas about love, romantic love, divine love, all kinds of things, nonsenses, man-made nonsenses. True love is contentment. If one is content, one loves self, one respects self. One cannot allow oneself to starve, to do nonsense, to make silly decisions which will eventually deprive one's physical, emotional, or other being. So all these problems like poverty, lack of conjugal bliss with, a, with another, with a spouse, perverted sexuality, they all come from discontent, from inner discontentment, from traumas, from childhood traumas, from um, misinterpretation of reality, from personal stories, and so on and so forth, from a desire to be special. All the perverted sexuality and perverted spirituality come from perverted sense of reality, desire to be something, desire to be special. Everyone is like a drop in the ocean, the same, but not the same in their individuality. When you try to emphasize your external individuality, you do not see your essence and you're blinded by that individuality. That's why we have so, many cor so much corruption. We emphasize what color we are, what gender we want to promote, and so on and so forth, how we look. But this is not the essence. In our essence, we are the same, and only in that we are the same. But we try to find equality in separation and the promotion of individuality, which creates more and more conflict and discontent on a collective level. And when this is there, there can be peace. There can't be anything good. There can be only disturbance. So we are living through the age of disturbance. When we promote this disturbance from within, when we emanate this disturbance from within and reflect it back, because we have discontentment inside, because we promote our insecurities, we promote our perversion, we promote our traumas, we don't promote our essence our contentment, because everyone is able to be content, black, white, yellow, red, blue, purple. No one needs that individuality, because individuality means you promote your narcissism. You promote your religious, spiritual narcissism, your gender narcissism, your uh, racial narcissism. Why? Do you think you find any essence there, that doesn't define you. And if we believe or disbelieve, it doesn't matter in the in reincarnation, or let's say it's not the only experience we have in this body. Maybe today your body is like this, tomorrow your body is different. 
we can acquire different physical forms. We can, even during lifetime, our physical form changes, our preferences change. So if we emphasize preferences, if we emphasize that which is transitory and that which separates us, what kind of unity we're looking for? What peace are we looking for? If we emphasize religious separation, spiritual separation, gender separation, all kinds of separation, we are competing. We are not able to find unity. We are not able to understand the essence. And the essence is absolutely the same for all, despite what you believe in or disbelieve, because essence is beyond beliefs or disbeliefs. It's the ultimate content being. So one cannot understand what true sexuality is or true spirituality is without this contentment. And one can only enjoy true sexuality through contentment because in that case, there are no roles. There is no individuality or corruption that is coming forth during this sexual connection. There is perception of something beyond that. As long as we are traumatized and we are not acknowledging the traumas, but on the contrary, propelling them, we are not healing, we are not dissolving our illusion, but propelling it, and thus we cannot ever understand what blissful being is, what godliness, what divinity, what reality, what truth are. Neither we can understand or enjoy true sexuality, which is beyond notions of any kind of perversion, any kind of expression, fetishes and so on. That is not true sexuality. That is a corruption that comes from inner corruption, inner traumas. And if those are not acknowledged, there is no spiritual progress. There's only propagation of spiritual, sexual, racial, and all other forms of narcissism, which divide the collective, the co collective consciousness. They're more and more into pieces, and then turning these pieces against one another without tapping into the essence. The essence unites everyone because once your consciousness is within. There is no thought of gender, race, religion, spirituality even. There's just perception of being. As long as you look at yourself and judge yourself, there's this constant judge at the background. You're not able to perceive reality as it is. The judge has to go, has to be dissolved. Then you understand the essence and you see that everyone else perceives the same essence if they're able to turn within and perceive their own being. One cannot understand the value of the body before one is content either. So we can only perceive our body in its true essence we can perceive our sexuality as the way we express ourselves. So sexuality is expression on all levels. And when certain levels are corrupt, then that sexuality or the self-expression will be corrupt as well on one or the other level. And there will be constant struggle, constant drama, constant conflict, because one is lacking contentment, free from contentment, instead of being free from illusion. It is very difficult to go back to contentment, it seems, for, me, for the majority of people, because the mind is so scattered outwards and clings to everything outwards, plus we're stimulated continuously. So the mind is dispersed. You think that you operate through your body, yet the body, the sense of the body is not fully there. 
you cannot perceive your body fully because the mind is dispersed. You can only understand and realize the value of the body and each organ, the way it operates, and also the way your well being is promoted from within or not promoted from within, only when you withdrawn from everywhere, from everything, and perceive your mind is within. And when your mind is within, in it very well perceives the body, everything that happens within the body, and it understands what to eat, what's the most beneficial, not because you hear what's beneficial, what's not, but what for you, what's for you beneficial. You perceive your own self, and then from that contentment you understand what is sexuality. You start emanating yourself, and you see that that is sexuality, and true sexuality is intelligence, is also the way you channel this intelligence through your emotions, through your thoughts, through your speech, and eventually through your body, and how you connect with that, with the other beings. But if other beings are disconnected with themselves and discontent, you cannot connect to them, because you will feel dissonance. Or if other people's self-expression is not matching your self-expression, or is not, say, colliding properly, matching, there will be again discontent. Many times people just want to be with one another for the sake of not being lonely. The, the feeling of loneliness comes from discontent. And the reason the mind can come up with whatever reason, the true reason is that one is not rooted, not connected within oneself. It means one's mind is dispersed, scattered, jealous, wants to have life of the other rather than cultivating your own life. So from all this discontentment comes fear, jealousy, insecurity, emotional imbalance, and then hormonal imbalance, physical imbalance, and so on and so forth. All kinds of other imbalances. Desire to impose one's will to be righteous are the biggest enemies of self. When you think you're right, the righteousness leads one to personal hell. So there's nothing we can fight for. There is nothing to attain. But the biggest attainment is through contentment and wholesomeness. And this wholesomeness is like absolute emptiness for the world. And yet for self is so nourishing. Thank you.